Good evening, golfing fans. Welcome back to the channel, proudly sponsored by betting.co.uk. So I'm just back bringing you my selections for this week's DP World Tour event. Um, we actually have one of the signature events this week. We've got the BMW PJ Championship taking place at Wentworth. Now, prog on to my selections. Um, welcome to the channel if you are new here. And uh, just a quick bit of a background about myself. I am an ex-tour professional, so I've got some playing experience. And I'm now trying to put that to good use, trying to find you the selections that I think are best suited to the golf course every single week. Now, we're on a little bit of a roll at the moment. We've had three profitable weeks in a row, and I'm very confident that we can make it four in this week's tournament. And across Twitter, YouTube, and all the other platforms last year, I was the second highest profitable golf tipster uh, across those platforms. So what I like to think is that my unique playing experience gives me a different angle of finding these selections. And so far, so good. It has been paying off rather nicely. Last season, we're over a 1,000 points in profit. Not at that level this year. However, we are on a little bit of a roll and we have been making some good profit in recent weeks. Also, if you're new to my channel, if you are able to click the subscribe button, uh, it's completely free to do so. It just helps get my content to a wider audience by doing so. So I would be much appreciated if you're able to do that as well. And of course, if you'd like some extra content, you can, of course, come and join my group chat using the link in the description below, where we give you much more content, loads more details into each event, and a bigger, wider sort of process to, to how I go about picking my selections. I also do things like sweepstakes and stuff like that every week as well, just as a little bit of an added bonus. But if we take a quick look back at last week's tournament, first of all, we had the Irish Open at Royal County Down. Um, and the two selections I think I put up in this uh, in my video were Bernd Wiesberger and Eric Van Royen. Now, um, I did have a full squad, of course, in my group chat. You do get extra selections in there as well. But the um, the list goes as follows. We had Bernd Wiesberger tied 63rd, so we didn't make any profit from him. We had Eric Van Royen, who finished in 12th, just missed out there on the money. But my other three selections, we had Bobby Mack, who finished fifth. We had Matteo Manassero at 60 to 1, finished third. And Dan Brown at 125 to 1, actually managed to finish fourth. So it's a highly profitable week once again. And I will be looking, obviously, to enhance that this week as well. But this is, again, just another part of why it's important, or at least the bonus to come over and join my group, because it seems to pay for itself if you're back in my selections and following the point system as well. Okay, so that's three weeks in a row of profit. We're looking to make it four here, and we have one of the signature events of the year. We've got the BMW Championship at the Wentworth Club. Um, a seriously, seriously good tournament on this, a very good golf course. And again, just a prime example to me why the DP World Tour is actually the best tour for punting, the best tour for watching. If you have a look at the courses they play, they take much more strategy. We've gone from the Belfry to Crand in Switzerland with a high altitude. We then went to Royal County down last week. We've got Wentworth this week. Um, we then go to Madrid and then we go back to St. Andrews. So we've got a seriously good calendar on the DP World Tour. And you can't just obviously pick players out of that hat and hope that you're going to get it right. So if you look at the PGA Tour, um, although you obviously have some of the better players there to a degree, you've still got the elite players here on the DP World Tour. And the courses that they play on the PGA Tour are basically short courses. Uh, the ball travels further as well. You've got big flat greens and it ends up just being a putt off. So for those that are punting on the PGA Tour, it is very difficult to find a player if you're actually trying to find a real strategy to who's going to suit the course best. Even if you're finding yourself in the rough on the PGA Tour, the greens are that big, you're still going to find the flat spots. Um, so it's no problem. It's basically a chip and a putt off throughout the week. And that is why you're finding so many unusual winners on tour it's simply a case of who's putting the best that week however going back to the dp world tour we've got difficult golf courses you need a real strategy to find the winners and again my process is quite unique uh over the majority because i've got that playing experience where you'll see a lot of players will look at these stats and say this player's hit a lot of greens in regulation this guy's putting well but that doesn't actually suit because if you go and take a look at the more intricate details sometimes those greens in regulation that they're hitting are on long courses, short courses, courses with big greens, small greens. So it's really important to dive into those a little bit deeper and find out why the selections are actually uh, suited to the golf course. And obviously, 
if you look at those intricate details, you can have a look a little bit more as a shot shape, uh, trajectory control, distance control. They are the real key factors that are going to make these players much more uh, suited to particular tracks over than others. And I think that's where I've got an advantage over most golf tipsters too. But okay, right. So we have the BMW PJ Championship at Wentworth Club, par 72, 7,267 yards long. And it's got just four par fives. In this episode, I'm going to bring you two of my main selections. And then I will bring you two long shots as well. Why not? But we're going to start off by taking a look at what's required round Wentworth. While it's a very all-round sort of golf course, you need to be quite good off the tee. You do, you do need to be quite good with your irons as well. And like everywhere, you do need a really good short game. But there's a couple of factors that I think are really important uh, to take into consideration for this week's event. If you go back and look at previous tournaments, I mean, the um, BMW Championship has been held at Wentworth now for 20, 25, 30 years because it's such a good event. Players that seem to do best around here do generally have a really good uh, percentage of strokes gained from T to green. So if you are having a look at a few of the general stats, that could be a pretty decent place to start. But I also like to find players around here. I think an extra factor that you need is players that scramble well. Because if you're missing the greens around here, players that get up and down from the side of the greens will not be losing shots on the field. Parage, definitely a friend around here. And I see it quite unlikely that we're going to have a runaway winner. So selection number one, this week is actually going to be Matteo Manassero. So he's a player that's definitely started to find his game again. He's a five-time DP World Tour winner, but it definitely doesn't tell the full story about Matteo. He was, of course, at one point a rising star, had four wins on the DP World Tour and just completely lost his way. We didn't even hear from him in the in a few years, but he went on and won at the Challenge Tour and he has now since come back and won the Johnson Workwear Open on the DP World Tour as well. And since then, he's just found his game. He's really improved once again. And he has a lot of attributes that I like for this week's event. He does have a decent uh, strokes gained number from T to green. As I said, it's one of the sort of standard stats that if you like uh, to that quite important around here. But a few other factors that I like about Matteo Manassero. He hits the ball both ways. He hits a fade and a draw, but not by big dispersions either. Just a real soft draw or a real soft fade. And he's a very controlled player with his irons. To go with that, he's a very consistently good ball striker, which means he's able to control the ball well when he is attacking those greens. Players that hit big fades or big draws around Wentworth may struggle because it only takes a small, slight um, impediment in the swing to make it go wrong. And they are the players that are going to be missing a lot of greens this week. But Manacero has got a nice, soft uh, ball shape. He's got a pretty decent neutral trajectory, which I don't mind too much this week if they hit it high or too low. But he's got a decent shot shape both ways. It's only um, a small dispersion from left to right or right to left. And he's a good ball striker. So it's a consistent thing that he's doing throughout his rounds. He's had six top tens since his uh, win in the Johnson workwear. So he's thriving. He finished third last week. And again, he is a player that is very good at scrambling. Even if he misses greens, he's very reliable with his wedges. And very reliable with his putter as well. You saw him last week at Royal County Down. He had to be quite clutch on a few occasions. And even though he finished third, he was really, really good at making those six, seven, eight foot putts when he needed to, to make sure that he stayed in contention. He is number 16 on the uh, strokes gained from tee to green. So again, he's for me, he's the real box ticker for uh, this week's tournament. You can get 60 to one about Matteo Manacero this week. And as I said, just a recap on the attributes I like. The general stat is the fact that you need to have pretty good uh, strokes strokes gained on, from tee to green. However, I like players that have a soft ball flight, a consistent ball flight, consistent ball strikers, and those that are good at scrambling as well. Mateo Manacero basically ticks all of those boxes this week, and at 60 to 1, he is definitely the overpriced player in the field. My second selection is actually going to be Laurie Cantor. Now, Laurie's a player I actually know quite well from my junior days and from my early pro days, but he's gone on just to be a really good player. He's now world at number 111, and he, of course, also broke his... Not also broke his main event. He also has a win on the DP World Tour this year by winning the European Open, and that was a breakthrough for Laurie Cantor. He's just improved since then as well. And like Manacero, he's got a, sh a soft shot shape. He generally plays at what I call a stock shot, which is a shot that you can repeat nice and simple. You don't have to do too many movements in your golf swing, and he hits it nice left-to-right shot. 
there's maybe about a six yard fade. So it's very soft, very controlled. And what I also like about Laurie's game, he never hits anything 100%. He sort of hits his irons at 80, 85%. And again, this just allows him to have a lot more control. And with that, he's a consistent ball striker. This ball striking is really important this week because if you're not hitting the ball well, then you're not going to be hitting these greens. And especially those players that hit big draws or big fades, if they're not striking the ball well. They're really going to struggle here unless they've got a superior uh, short game. But again, Laurie Cantor, I like the fact that he hits these three-quarter shots. Good ball striker. Soft ball um, shot shape with a fade. However, he can hit a draw if necessary. And he is another player that does particularly well when scrambling on these sort of greens. He showed this sort of um, attribute a few times this year. And that's actually what's kept him in contention. Even when he won the European Open, he wasn't playing his best golf, but he had a really good, strong game plan. And it just meant that he was able to be really consistent and get the job done. So you can currently get, what can you get about Laurie Cantor? Um, 60 to one on Laurie Cantor. That doesn't seem right, actually. Let me just check that for you. I think it's a little bit shorter. I think I wrote that down wrong. I'm pretty sure he's about 45 to 1. Let's have a quick look. 50 to 1 uh, with 10 places with Ladbrokes for Laurie Canto. I think that's a steal, to be honest, with the 10 places available um, with Ladbrokes. Both of these players that I've got this week have very repeatable golf swings. They're completely the opposite, actually, because Matteo Manassero actually hits a general soft draw. Laurie Cantor actually hits a general soft fade. But again, they're both players that have got consistent ball flights, consistent swings, three-quarter shots, soft ball shape, good at scrambling, pretty decent from tee to green as well. I just don't see where it goes too far wrong for them this week, providing that they turn up in the form they have done this season. And I think at these sort of prices, they do obviously have to come into consideration. Now, I said I was going to bring you two long shots as well. Now, these are going to be taking the prices with Coral or Ladbrokes, and these are two players that aren't exactly the most flashiest again, but again, they do tend to play quite well within themselves and may go under the radar a little bit on that basis and probably not backed by too many players. The first selection is going to be Rich Ramsey at 200 to 1. Again, he's a player that I've actually followed quite closely for a long time now. He's not flashy, he doesn't hit it a mile, but he just goes about his business, stays within himself, plays his game, and again, similar to Matteo, and Laurie Cantor, he's just got a soft shape uh, ball flight as well. Nice and controlled, doesn't try and overhit things too hard, and he's rock solid with a short game as well. I won't go into it too many into too many intricate details about Rich Ramsey there, but at 200 to 1 with 10 places, I think he could be worth a squeak. Just for small stakes, though, outside of my main selections. And then the other player is a 250 to 1 shot. Again, with Labrix or Corey, you can get the 10 places. And that's going to be Callum Shinkwin. Um, he's a really good player. He actually finished seventh in this event last year. And he's well-versed to the course here at Wentworth. Had loads of time playing this over the years as an Englishman. And again, on his best form, he's a very, very talented player. The 250 to 1 probably discredits his ability when he turns up in his best form. Again, a nice shot shape. But what I like about Callum Shinkwin... He's got a very controlled trajectory, very controlled ball flight. So again, I don't see where it goes too far wrong for him, providing he turns up in okay form. So Rich Ramsey at 200 to 1 and Callum Shinkwin at 250 to 1 are just two players that I think you want to keep on side at massive prices just for a few small stake selections. But the main two for this week are Matteo Manassero at 60 to 1 and then Laurie Cantor at 50 to 1 as well. Okay, so I won't go into too many more details, but if you'd like a tournament preview, individual player profiles, more intricate details than I said, you'll find with most other tipsters. I will pop a link in the description below if you'd like to come over and join me there with my other members. And we are, of course, in uh, for the last three weeks, have made profit following my staking system too. So if you come over and join us there, there's loads more content. Loads more about the players, more about the course, tournament previews, what is actually required. And again, the unique point that I've had some tour playing experience bringing you different angles to why players are actually suited to the golf course, I think is what makes me uh, stand out a little bit in that sense. You'll see a lot of players tipping the likes of Rory McIlroy and Tommy Fleetwood, etc. this month. Single, prig single figure prices for me in golf tournaments don't really appeal too much. Um I mean, they're going to have obvious chances. And in fact, this is probably the sort of tournament that Tommy Fleetwood could go and play quite well. And he, 
He tends to struggle a little bit when it comes to the majors, but outside of those, this is one of the signature events and I could definitely see his name on the title, but way too short to bet an event like this. But if you again, you come over to my group, I will explain in more detail why, and you can have a good chat with all the lads as well. Okay, so thanks everyone for tuning in. As mentioned, if you're able to subscribe to my channel, it just helps me out that little bit extra, gets my content out there to a wider audience. And um, good luck with your bets this week. Drop me a comment with who you fancy and even why you fancy them. If you feel like letting me know who your selections are, I'll be back again next week and hopefully we can have some more good news with some more winners. Goodbye for now.